We didn't come this far to slow down now. Let 2021 be the year that you light up, that you wake up, that you shake up that special something in your soul, that you reach out and work for that health, that life, that vibrant living you know is possible. Let this be the year. Let this be the day. Let this be the moment that you believe in miracles again. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Devin and I'm super excited. You better get ready for this one because I know this guy brings the fire and he's gonna light that special something in you. I wanna welcome to If They Knew, Dr. Ray. Hello, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm mm. super excited to see where this conversation goes. Mm. And it's it's beautiful um, in the way that you're, I'm sure you feel the same way of we come into this, we don't line it out, we don't prep, it's not scripted. It's we allow the magic to work its way through, right? <laughs> Uh, that's it <laughs> and, and and so for people that aren't currently following you on social which we're going to make sure by the end of this episode that they are um tell us a little bit about who you are where you're at yeah. in the world and and what you do yeah um so who am i um so it it all starts from um originally from laura mississippi uh so from a small town um about 20 about 20 000. um it depends does it guess it's relative so it's like small um and I'm from, I come from this like just unhealthy family. Un <laughs> that's where I come from. And, um, and I think that that's kind of what got me started into going a different direction and what that looks like. And I think more so I was open to seeing something different. And I talked about this before, but being the disruptor to this generational cycle that continues to happen after year after year after year and if no one disrupts this cycle then the cycle just continues to grow and continues to go right mm -hmm. um so i consider myself the, the disruptor of my family's generation so i'm going to I change i'm changing it right now as we speak because i want to start a new cycle right and what that looks like um and that's what actually got me into chiropractic um, and it was definitely different than what I was brought up to, to believe and things like that. So uh, I have always been the one to go the opposite way or go upstream per se. Like it just, like, I don't know, maybe it's just my nature. I don't know what it is, but. I think that might be a chiropractor, like that, that rebel thing that's like, oh, you want me to go that way? I, I want to see what's over here. <laughs> exactly. And it's a thing, like, I don't even know what's over there, mm -hmm. but. I'm willing and I'm open to just go over there and yeah. explore. Yeah, yes. it's an adventure. <laughs> You're up for the the unknown because that's where the, the good stuff is mm. at. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's that's it. That's it. You yeah. said it perfectly. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of my background as far as where I've come from and how I got into chiropractic um, and really what has fueled me to be very passionate, uh, first about chiropractic and also about just helping people and educating people and um and holding space for people and loving on people and serving people um and that's where i am and and today and i, I absolutely love it I absolutely love every second of practice i've only been practicing two years but it has been amazing from the ups and the downs and the rounds and all of that and what a time to be new in practice right like <laughs> god must have had a special something for you to have you know my brother and sister both opened in spring of last year. So, Oh, okay. Right. Um, and, <laughs> but that's, that's what life prepares you for, right? You yes. have chosen for this moment. There's a reason in that. And, um, you know, I, you, you've been officially in the game, right. For two years, but I, I watch your evolution on, on social and, and the magnitude that at, at how quickly you're following, which I hate that word, but your engagement has grown. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, how, how exponentially that impact. So, um, you know, walk us through what it was, what it was like being in practice and finding your voice. Cause you, you love, you tell the truth and you do it with a whole lot of love. Like how did, how did you feel called into to speaking up like that on social? 
Yeah, so I think what what it came down to so in twenty twenty, I I just kind of sat back and just kind of like keep game essentially, just observe like okay, this is happening over here, this is happening over here, and these things are happening, and just really integrate that into like because I had to formulate words because like everything is happening, all this has happened so fast, it, it's crazy. Uh, and it's still happening. And I just had to like really articulate words and my thinking and what that looks like. And then I think I started to feel a shift last quarter in 2020 uh, that was happening. And I didn't know what the shift looked like, but I just knew there was, there was something that was around the corner. Mm-hmm. And and that's what it was. And one day I was like just inspired to just be like, okay, like health is your response. This, that was the first post that kind of kind of did it. I was I, I wouldn't say it's the first post, but it was a post that got the most engagement, I would say. Um, because before I've always been sharing different things, but it hasn't been in that direction, I guess right. we're saying. Um, and that post and, said what? And it said like, your health is your responsibility, mm. right? Say it again. <laughs> your health is your responsibility. Um, and I really, I mean, cause we're gonna, we're gonna jump into it, but I want- Yeah wherever you are to stay, take a second and close your eyes mm. and feel those words. My health is my responsibility. Yeah. Feel it in your bones, in your heart, in your lungs, in that changes the game of life. It changes everything. It changes <laughs> everything. Um, and then it snowballed from there. Yeah, it pretty much snowballed from there. And uh, and that's the message I've always uh, shared with my patients uh, in the practice. So it was more so of just taking this message that I share in my my walls of practice and just putting it on social media. Um, so it's nothing new. It's just more so sharing it with the rest of the world. And the timing, the world was ready for it. Right. Mm. So where in our brick and mortar, we deliver adjustments with our hands social is an opportunity to deliver adjustments for the soul, for the heart. Ah, I love that. Yes. Right? <laughs> and so, I mean, really, I, you're one of the people that I go to when I need adjusted. Like I have mm. my inner counsel that when I have, you know, like they used to say, stinking thinking, or when I get sad or when I get fearful, we're all human. It's, it's easy to get triggered by different things. And when I need adjusted, there are people I know I just need to go flip through and remember who I am because gotcha. it holds a mirror up. So, I mean, I'm grateful to have you here to say thank you because it, it really does. It makes a big impact. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, it sounds pretty easy, right? Your health is your responsibility. All right. There you go. That's <laughs> now, into some real life practicality, what does that world look like? If you go from a paradigm where you sicky, me fixy, I'm the doctor, you're the lowly patient, I fix you. If we break that paradigm and we disrupt this healthcare system, yeah, like, what's that look like? What what do they do then? Yeah, um, I think so. That's the first step of um, of really owning that piece and really like again, again, sitting in it and like, okay, my health is my responsibility, and now it's okay. This means that like, and one thing we have to like really recognize and really say that health isn't a sprint; it's a marathon. Right. So literally it's, it's endurance. It's like the things we're doing, is it sustainable? Right. Is it sustainable? (laughs) And I think if we ask ourselves that question right right now. (laughs) Yeah. No. (laughs) But I think if we ask ourselves that question, whether it's doing uh, movement, whether it's doing uh, the the foods you're eating, uh, rather the stress that you're encountering, and we're not dealing with that stress appropriately, um, or rather it's uh, meditating, breathing, like whatever these these core concepts, right? Whatever it is, then I think you ask yourself this question, is this sustainable um, for my marathon, right? Like, is this, is, is, this, is this the journey? So I think that's where the juice is, is in the journey. It's the each and every step. And I think people look at it like this big task, but it's really not, it's just so, it's just, it's a lot, a lot of little tasks. <laughs> a lot. And that's lot. where people get, at least in my experience, that's where I get tripped up. That's where I see people get tripped up is that 
we get to that overwhelm point and it's like we default to what we know. Mm, yes. We default to what our parents raised us in. We default to our comfort zone, which if you come from, you know, an unhealthy family or an angry family or a, a this, that, or the other family, like your default is not healthy. <laughs> And so wow, yeah, yeah. you can make choices that re fire and rewire the brain. Yes, mm -hmm. I think that's super important um, because like just I, as I think about like in practice, it's yes, people are doing they're making choices. They're like acting and doing these certain things as far as regarding their health, whatever choices they are. Um, what I think it really comes down to is the belief systems that lie beneath that where you're saying what they revert back to. So I honestly think we're in the, the business of changing belief systems because we change the belief system, they change the behavior and the behavior changes the action. Um, and so we just kind of reverse engineer that and let's, let's start shifting paradigms because we actually have a, a like pretty much, I call it a um, new patient orientation class, but it's pretty, I can call it a paradigm shift because this is exactly what I'm, I want to do for my patients that, that show up in that for all my new patients. And, and it's not just disrupting your own uh, lineage, but it's disrupting, mm. right? You look at where the trajectory that you're currently on is serving you and where it's not, and you get responsible and real honest with yourself and you choose how to course correct. And, and sometimes you have to make big, you know, big course corrections. And sometimes <laughs> and it's like trimming the bonsai tree, right? It's just like the little micro things. So, I mean, and you never get there. I love that you said that about, you know, the juice being in the journey, because even you and I, I feel like I'm pretty healthy. And then I look at Ben Greenfield or Hell yeah. like biohackers <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know anything about how good I can feel, you know? So um, we're never there, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I think, and you said like the course correction can be big or little, but we're talking about if there's just one degree off and you continue that, you will continue to go further and further, right? That's just like one degree, right? Just a few degrees. And just, if we can just shift it a little bit, mm. then we can get back on course. Like mm. it makes the biggest difference. The biggest difference. And if we support people to, uh, you know, you read it, it's if I'm 1% better, every day then at the end of a year i'm 365 percent better yeah like, right we, <laughs> we overestimate what we can do in a week and mm -hmm. underestimate the power of a year or five yes yeah or five yeah you're right <laughs> and that's and that's you know and i that's the maybe beauty of the design of what i will call propaganda of our current times is it keeps us so triggered in fight or flight that we get mm. caught in right here, right now. And we need to anchor, we need to recenter ourselves and anchor to one year, five years beyond this story that we're in. This is a chaotic tornado that has divine blessings in so many ways, and it will not always be this way, right? Yes. Um, so how do you keep yourself positive and focused and, and forward motion when it is chaotic or scary or um infuriating for those of us that yeah. <laughs> right um how do you keep that big bright beautiful smile yeah. of yours um so this is it's funny that you like you worded that way because i am literally working on a program i'm about to launch uh in a month um on that it's like how can we remain center like what is our center and how can we remain in it um, because I think in your center is where your inner power is. And this is where you can think, this is where you heal. Um, and this is where you're more productive creativity wise. And, and you can also call this center your, I mean, parasympathetic mode, right? Right. <laughs> right? Uh, so it's like, how can we get back to that place and like remain in that place and not allow the outside world to dictate the inside world, mm -hmm. right? Because we have, obviously we have everything that we need with us right. and inside of us. But like you said, we are allowing this external world to dictate how we feel, like how we show up, all these different things. And I think for me, it's more so of recognizing that there's two different states of this parasympathetic, there's sympathetic and knowing the difference in that and knowing that in a sympathetic mode, I can't think, I can't be creative, I can't be who I want to be in that mode when I know that there's not a real threat, right? 
So knowing that piece, I have to get back to my center. I can't let the outside dictate the inside. And cause I get it all the time from my family. Like I live uh, from a very stressed, like very stressed out family, like high, I'm talking about it's crazy. And they're like, like, how are you so, like, how are you so laid back? How are you so just kind of like, I control the controllables, right? You can't control the uncontrollables. And I think that's the biggest thing there of actually knowing it. It's like, I can't control this, but what I can control is me, my thoughts, how I feel, right? I can control those things and that, and they're going to be able to be expressed differently. So that's what I, I would, I do. And it's more so being mindfulness. And that's really what it comes down to mindfulness. And a standard. You have a standard for yourself that mm. control the, because we can all control the controllables. That's a really great saying, but in application, it takes someone who has a standard for holding that. Right. Mm. right? Yeah. So that takes discipline and that takes, um consistency and it takes getting to be able to be again honest enough to look at yourself when you're in and out of alignment with that yes um as you say that and it's never really hit me uh, until you just said that so one of my biggest core values is freedom Mm -hmm. and and as i'm thinking through it is so if, if i'm allowing the external to dictate my internal then that's not freedom for me so freedom for me is being in my space mm-hmm. and being able to move and show up and do the things that uh, how I want to show up. So so thank yeah. you for that. <laughs> and, and 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 I love bouncing that because fr- freedom is also one of mine. Imagine that. Why we <laughs> um, and in my center, I know that freedom isn't something that someone out there gives me. Freedom is mm. something I always possess when I'm in connection with my source. It's always mine. And yes. so I trigger myself when I engage in an external world that is an illusion, right? So it's <laughs> right maintaining that state is a total game changer. Now I want to pick up. I want to I want to speak directly to the chiropractors, to the chiropractic, yeah. yeah. to the healthcare practitioners, mm-hmm. to the light workers of the world that know that they know some of these things, guys, go check out his social, read through some of these lines. These are ancient wisdoms. Like a lot of what you're, you're putting up there. This is stuff that doesn't blow away with the wind. These are, these are as steady as the sun, right? (laughs) These are things that we all know. You're just reminding us, right? But people get afraid. They get afraid of what people think. They get fearful of getting in trouble or, you know, slap on the hand in their practice. I don't know, right? So how have you tapped into the courage to step up, to speak up, and to keep elevating the game of of leading in this time? Yeah. Um, well, I think the thing comes down to, I mean, being, a, being in this space of a healthcare provider or a light worker, whatever it may be, I feel that we have all been put in this position to show up right, for humanity, I think that there are certain people that's called to do certain things, because if I, I've told people every time a patient, like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, I'm doing amazing. I'm saving the world one spot at a time, mm-hmm. right? And some people may say, like, oh, that's a big task. But for me, it doesn't seem so big, because mm-hmm. I feel like that's exactly what I'm here to do, and I'm in it. And I think that is what allows me to have the fuel because I think uh, Dr. Brett, Dr. Brett Jones has said, like, what are you willing to live for? Uh, and that really hit hard, home, home for me because it's like, I think this is actually what I'm willing to live for here is mm-hmm. I want to be able to show up and contribute to humanity because I have kids. And just like I started at a certain point in my family, I want to be able to up this, this start point essentially for my family and for my kids um, so that when I leave this world, it's a better place, right? A little better, right? Mm-hmm. That's all that matters. If it's just a little better, that's, that's, that's it. Um, and then it just my, I just want to be able to contribute to humanity uh, in an impactful way. And that, that's what resonates with me. And it's not scary at all um and i i own it and i'm i'm in it and it's because i want to just see humanity evolve uh because i know it's much bigger than who i am so if you if you reach out to the other human on the other end of the listening or the watching of this 
and they say, how do I find that in me? What do you say? I think it, I think it comes down to, I think it comes down to purpose, I would say, right? I think it comes down to purpose because I feel like the purpose is like the GPS, right? Um, obviously we all have phones, we all have a GPS system. We, and if we're trying to go somewhere, we're going to type the address in or whatever, and like, or hey Siri, like take me to this place. Right. And Siri's gonna come up and like, okay, this is where you go. We can go, we can go a few routes. Do you wanna go the fastest route? Do you wanna go like, what does it look like? But it's gonna help guide you and it's going to be more so like the the guardware. So just like on a highway, how they have those ridges when you mm-hmm. when you when you, have, when you get uh-huh. too far to the side, it, it wakes you up. It's like, hey, like get back into your lane, right? Um, so I think that's how I look at my life is when I am getting out there and like I'm I have the wake up call to kind of get back in alignment. So I think it 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 literally guides you through every decision, uh, everything that you do uh, when you have a purpose. Right. And it's also going to be your your fuel because you have to be able to be sustainable and be able to, like I said, it's a marathon. Like all this is all is a marathon. The hell too. Right. Um, and can you be sustainable with this and continue this while you're here on this until you expire, whenever that day is? And the rules apply across the, you know, as as across when it comes to when you say something to live for, I hear Joe Dispenza in my head. I went to a seminar of his and he said, you know, the reason that people don't push when they feel called to stand up, to speak up is because we think of JFK and we think of Martin Luther King and we think of these people who have been persecuted or killed for being light, for for leading these types of, and he said, we have to let that belief system and that story go. Mm. That's not the reality. It's not what am I willing to die for? It's what am I willing to live for? And yeah. that pulls you instead of pushes you, which is a wildly different force within, right? Um, and I and I hope that, you know, the people listening to this, because, you know, I'm sure you've gotten this too. You share a video, you share a post, people reach out or send you a private message or come to your practice and go, guy, I just wish I could do that you know, right. I just wish I could, I, I think these things, gosh, I resonate with these words. And that's the thing is there's, there's this knowing churning through all of us. Right. And so yes. one nugget from what he's shared or these tips about, you know, let your, let your purpose call you know that like, I know this is over here, but I, I want to go this way. And I'm going to mm-hmm. trust that I'll be led along the way with that, with that purpose and that calling. How do you stay in alignment with trust to know that, that everything is going to pan out for the best? How do you keep that (laughs) sunshine and rainbows trajectory? Um, So um, I guess, I guess it will have to just come down to, like you say, it's definitely, there's definitely a trust there. Um, But as I like really look back on my life, and like look through every every situation that happened, whether it's good or bad, um, it all worked out. Like it always works out. You know what I mean? So like being able to look back into the past and not looking back for like bad stuff and like want to bring it back up and relive it, but it's more so of looking at the past for the trail. Like like oh, I'm like okay, I see a trail. What that looks like, mm-hmm. and it's pretty consistent very consistent Mm -hmm. so this is pretty consistent like okay so that means that there's more than a chance the higher the higher chance is that moving forward from here is that again everything is going to work out right right i think if we're able to move with our intuition and just what that like what that feels like and if it feels easy it doesn't feel resisted and that's typically what i typically go with Mm -hmm. right if it does Yeah. And I think that's maybe, at least I believe one of the divine blessings of this time is to redirect us back to trusting ourselves and Mm. not looking outside ourselves for permission. Right. Um, And so I love that. Um, Now, if somebody wants to get connected and, and hear more about these courses and these offerings and and really just has a question for you or anything, how do people find you? Yep. Um, So the, I love, I love Instagram platform. 
into unless they delete me or something. But <laughs> well, we're not allowing that. <laughs> we're not allowing that. Mm-mm. If they do, I'll be back. Um, but that's right. Yeah. So uh, Dr. Raymond Nichols. So Dr. Period Raymond Nichols. Um, so if where you can connect with me, um, send me a DM, whatever it may be, um, and just kind of see where I'm doing, what I'm up to. Yeah. And and your practice is. My practice is Align Life. Uh, we're located in Greenville, South Carolina. Okay. Yep. So it's me and my wife. Uh, we practice together. Um, and like again, we've been in practice two years and seen some phenomenal results. And uh, just being able to help this community has been amazing. Like seriously, this is a super, like exceeds my expectations coming out of school. <laughs> My uh, my brother's in Charleston, so when I come visit, oh okay, I find a way to come visit you too. Yeah, that's um, a few hours uh, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in Mount Pleasant, in a beautiful place out there, and and you're such a lighthouse. I mean, you're such a, a ray of sunshine in what could be dark times. But we know that day all always follows night, and spring always follows winter, and this is just a cycle mm. of seasons that we're going through right now. If you leave humanity with one more piece of advice or one more like up type moment in there, you know, your health is your responsibility. What do you got for him, Dr. Ray? Mm, I'm gonna have to go. So I guess I want more so go with. No, I'm gonna go with um, just being open. I think it's, uh, like I said, we said kind of started at the beginning of kind of how I got on my my journey of of just being open to, even if something doesn't align with your belief system, but being able to hear it out, being able to integrate that um, however you may, um, I think that's one of the, the most important things that we could do right now, just because I've seen, I'm seeing so much division um, and and yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, so I think if we could do that, that would be amazing. Just being, just being open. Like you don't have to agree, but just be open, right? And we have to be able to sit at the same table, even if we don't <laughs> agree on things. A, vision is a lie. And, and being able to, to love one another, regardless of viewpoint, is, should be a standard we all hold. That's- 100%. I'm with it. Um, stay open friends stay curious I've got so I took so many notes Um, so I'll be dropping different things in the show notes and links so you can connect with Dr. Ray and I will leave this as a dot 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 into the universe and we'll see where we are a few months or a year from now Mm -hmm. along our marathon and we'll invite you back and we'll reflect on on where we've been so thank you so much for your time guys we love you I can tell you from my heart, from his heart, if we can support you in any way, just give us a shout. We love you. Well, what'd you think? Thank you so, so much for investing your time and your energy to share in the conversation on this episode of If They Knew. The whole vision was to invite some of my favorite storytellers, mentors, teachers, and guides that inspire me to live healthier, to live happier, to live more free, more authentically me. I hope that something they said, something they shared, opened up a little piece of you that had been there all along and just needed a little nudge to remember. If you have any feedback, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to post it in the comments or reach out to me directly. If you know somebody that you think would make us a good interviewee, Send me your suggestions. You are the reason, you are the motivation for this podcast, for these conversations. If you really wanna crank up the light in your health and life, be in Wichita, Kansas, and join us for the big idea on June 25th, 26th, and 27th. We're gonna blow you away with speakers from all over the country who are gonna elevate the game when it comes to what it means to live vibrantly alive. This is the community you've been looking for. Now, there's big work to be done. And if we want to see change in the world, we've got to start with ourselves. So I hope that this episode and the different things I share on social media and the events that we host help bring it all together. I love you. I appreciate you. I am so, so very grateful for this space and for you. 
Have a beautiful, beautiful day. I'll see you soon.